All right, we are back. Welcome to the second episode of the new Troopy build series. We are back at Project Overland, obviously, uh, back up at Sydney to keep going on with the work. A little bit has happened since I've left and I'll show you that now. So as you can see, the flares have been attached to the Troopy. Uh, they are from Connect 4x4, they're plastic. Seem like quite good quality flares. Um, only issue is they're a little bit hard to put on. Uh, Aaron said he had to, you know, just a, a fair bit of work to get them on. And after looking in, on forums and troop carriers of Australia, uh, I think they they have the same issue with any of the kits from ARB, FRP, Connect, 4x4. They're all a little bit of work. You just gotta be quite careful with how you put them on. Uh, these have been tech screwed on, you can pop rivet. Um, but yeah, they're just, just you're gonna spend a bit of time just to get them right and looking nice. So, and again, I'm glad I didn't have to do that because that is something I would probably uh, struggle with getting that really nice alignment. Um, yeah, I think they look fantastic. It's important to note these are just straight black out of the box and I've left them like that. Now, they do need paint or some sort of uh, protective film. I am gonna clear wrap them. Uh, we actually just really like the black. Holly and I just like black. We thought it looks great. Stands out a little bit, um, so we're going to leave them like that. Clear wrap over the top just to protect the plastic because it will get scratched up and probably fade a bit. So that'll help. Um, so yeah, really excited about that. Another thing that has been fitted here is the Safari Armax Snorkel. Um, I'll explain why in the last episode we went with this one. Pretty much like the way it looks and it works well. Simple as that. So uh, yeah, really excited that's on. The boys threw that on for me. Uh, yeah, so very, very excited. The next step we actually have with the car now that the GVM upgrade and the track correction has been done is registration. So we have to go through the usual process of doing an unregistered vehicle, which is blue slip first, uh, which this will pass no worries, obviously. And then after that, we can get it registered and we're good to go. After that, we will be putting the tires and rims on and in the seats, and that will all be getting engineered in one. So, yeah, some exciting things going on. Lots of goodies still showing up to the shop. Cruiser Company rear bar here, going windows. That's all for a later episode, but that's all here now. Far out, running into stuff. So one thing I have been working on this afternoon and just putting together has been the roof rack. Now, I know I've said in previous episodes that we are going for a rooftop conversion, which we are, but more on that down the track. It's not gonna happen sort of, you know, really, really soon. It'll be a few episodes down the line. And summer's coming up and we've got the Adelaide four-wheel drive show and we just wanted a, a usable uh, camper. Obviously, we've got a very, very good tent uh, with the Camp King Industries tent. So I thought, why don't we just throw a roof rack on and get the tent on? So went with Front Runner again. We had Front Runner and Elsie and that was an absolute, absolutely fantastic roof rack. The kind of abuse that thing copped uh, was incredible um, all over the country. Uh, so I couldn't have been happy with it. So I went with the um, three quarter length roof rack from Front Runner for this Troopy, just because we're gonna be putting the tent on and that's pretty much it. Uh, so yeah, threw it together, really straightforward process. When I put it on the car, I'll show you more of sort of what we're doing to it. All right, so we are just gonna go and get a Waybridge ticket. This is necessary for the blue slip. We got a Waybridge ticket done before we did the track correction and GVM upgrade. So just so we can see a difference, if there's any difference in weight, I don't think there will be, but this is just due diligence. You have to go and get the blue slip done. Sorry, the Waybridge ticket done before blue slip. So we'll go do that now. So this is also the first time we're driving the car with the Obviously track correction and suspension and GVM and everything in the parabolics. I'm not expecting it to drive well because it's empty. But we'll see how it goes. Yeah. Alright, so we're 2.34 and last time we were 2.36 so we've lost 20 kilos <laughs> um, somewhere along the line so yeah just goes to show less steel probably in the leaves I would say as I was saying so interesting there you go
All right, so yesterday afternoon we got our Waybridge ticket, which was necessary for the blue slip. So now we're just at G Force Automotive here in Norellan to blue slip done, which is a pretty exciting step. So we can go and get a register after this. We must have registered actually, <laughs> actually driving properly on the road. Alright, the blue slip is done. She passed with flying colours, of course. It's a brand new car with brand new <laughs> modifications. I hope it passed with flying colours. Uh, so yeah, now we can pick it up and take it to the RTA or we'll take ourselves to the RTA and just get it registered. That's exciting. It is exciting. What do you reckon? I'm excited. <laughs> so the next piece of the puzzle is something I'm really excited about. And it's something that everyone I've spoken to has bought a newer car and uses it for remote touring and going out bush. Uh, all said that they wish they had done, and that is paint protection. So there's a few options out there these days. The one I'm going for is the Bush Wraps Clear Wrap. Now this is uh, a DIY kit, and they have heaps of kits for really popular make makes and models of cars. So they have a kit for the 78 series, 79s or D Maxes. They've got heaps of stuff. Go on their website and check it out um, and see if your car has a kit. Now, uh, it is a DIY kit, but for me personally, I'm happy to pay uh, someone to do it so it's done properly and just installed really nicely. I just feel like me and stickers never seem to line up nice and square. So uh, it does look like a pretty easy kit though. You've got nice, like quite large bleed edges and that. So it gives you a bit of. Um, it's uh, pretty forgiving, I think, um, as far as kits go. So it's being installed right now. Um, I'm gonna go film the process, but uh, it's very simple. Um, and yeah, if you're keen to do it yourself, it's a cheap way to protect your paint on your car. So we'll go check it out. So you're literally just wetting the surface with the solution, yep. which sort of gets it ready, and then you can peel it. Yeah, yeah. So this will hold it in place for you to peel it. Yep. Um, so the, the face is down. So and then it, hold, it holds it for you. Yeah, I see. It, yeah. <laughs> just a little bit of water just holds it in place. So you can, um, especially if you're doing it by yourself, it does help. Yep. Yeah, if you want to start peeling that, yep. just wet your fingers a little bit, just yep. so you got a bit of slipperiness. That's it, yeah, just make sure it's sitting. I've done this before. <laughs> oh, here we go. Okay, cool. That's it. So we've got our sheet now. Big tunnel. Yeah, this is the biggest one. So I'll wet the other side of the car. So if you can wet both sides of so the car itself and the panel, it'll uh, slide a bit easier for you. Right, so with the panel being a bit wet, you can put it on, but you can actually then shimmy it around. So if you haven't got it perfect, then you grab, grab that side, or grab this side. So if you've got wet fingers as well, yep. that Helps. way you don't press a fingerprint into the film. 
so you keep your hands kind of slippery. Yep. And just um, just grab the corner. That's it. Maybe uh, you're right. You're right. Come around. up to this um, edge yep so I'll get this one lined up roughly where it's meant to go so if you get the solution right that way it'll slide like this for a second so you got a little bit of time to find its spot yep so roughly here's all right that's where it's going Cool. So you have two sets of hands, it's a lot quicker. Yep. And we just wet this side as well, so the squeegee, the squeegee will slide, so yeah. Before you start hitting it down, you just make sure it is still it's, yep. where it's meant to be. Work down. And if it's a little bit out, you can come back up. Okay, cool. I'll just re wet it. Cool. It's pretty forgiving. Yeah. Really. Yeah. As long as you keep it wet, you've got, you got time up yet. Yeah. Up your sleeve. Cool. Okay. When it starts drying out too much, that's when it, it starts grabbing and then you start stretching it when you don't want to. So I'm just locking it in place at the top and then from there you start working your way down. So I think it's worth noting in the kit, uh, there's a few different um, versions you can get. Pretty much, you know, there's uh, cheaper versions up to the more expensive ones. This is pretty much what kind of protection you're looking for. Uh, this is the sort of mid-range one. Um, now, everything comes in the kit as well. So you've got the squeegee, is that right? Yep, squeegee are the solution that you're gonna add to the water just to um, prep the surface and keep it slippery, I suppose, yeah. as well when it's on the panel. Um, so yeah, it's pretty um, well-appointed kit. What do you reckon? Yeah, it goes good. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so the wrap is being done right now as I speak. One thing uh, I'm gonna add to the car now, it's a very simple modification, but if you've got a 70 series, you'll probably know what I'm talking about. The gear stick, it's very low, it's an awkward position. You feel like you're really reaching down to change gears all the time. Very simple solution. Little extender arm here, so you can get these from Hurricane, Thorburns, heaps of people do them. Literally unscrew the knob, screw this on. Uh, you can get different sort of step ups and sizes, so you can find one that sort of suits you. So that'll be good for the interior comfort. Once I have the center console fridge down the side, I'll be able to lean my arm and you know, won't really have to move it too much to change gears. A bit like Elsie, Elsie's gear stick's very tall. Um, so yeah, I'm really happy with the way the interior is shaping up because I've got the one stone armrests. Uh, just the black ones which make such a huge difference if you've got a 70 series definitely grab uh, those Holly's calling me Sorry, Holly's getting me lunch um, <laughs> So if you've got a 70 series definitely look at getting the one stone armrest They make such a huge difference just for driving comfort such an easy cheap uh, Modification that makes such a difference to just the drivability um, of the car so obviously as well, we've got the Shieldman seats probably going in tonight. We'll probably get onto that. Uh, again, very excited for that because um, they're actually custom trimmed these seats and they look amazing.
Okay, morning everyone. It is the next day here, just a Project Overlander. So, yesterday afternoon we got our seats in. So, obviously we have the Shieldman uh, seats, the Vario uh, XXL, which is the exact same seats I had in Elsie, uh, which I'm super happy about because these seats are honestly... The only seats I fit in, I realize I fit in, they are good for taller people because they are very, like, they're large, they're tall. Um, also, they're the only seat where my back doesn't get sore. Even our, like, our runabout, which is just a Subaru Outback, 2015 Subaru Outback, like, a objectively quite a comfortable car, my back still gets sore in those seats. So, I don't know what it is about these things. My back just doesn't get sore. I'm going to have to dial in the... Um, all the settings that uh, you know try and get it similar to what I have in LC so it's uh, yeah it works just as well but uh, also you can see that these are custom trim so you can get any trim you want on your Shieldman seats when you order them um, obviously uh, paying a bit extra for it but if you want some fabric in particular you can get anything on there um, this fabric here actually funnily enough is uh, retro like Mercedes fabric so, yeah, it's uh, it's probably it's definitely a first for a Land Cruiser, I reckon. But I think it looks fantastic. When when we sort of initially saw them, I wasn't sure if they were sort of gonna um, look out of place in the interior. But all the grey and black on it actually matches all the accents in the interior. So there's a sort of a light grey which matches the light grey that's on the roof and the sides here. There's a dark grey which matches, you know, like on the steering wheel and uh the dash and all that and then there's black obviously i've got my black accents going on with my you know one stone armrests my dash mat and then all the black sort of on the dash and everything so they fit so well and they just look really really nice um so yeah if you're looking for a really nice set of seats for your touring vehicle just go for shieldman honestly i just don't think you can get any better so i have a theory of why it's worth upgrading your seats in your touring vehicle so there's a few thing, you know, there's a few places in your touring vehicle where you spend a lot of time. One of them is your sleeping option, is you know, your rooftop tent or you know how you're gonna sleep. And having a really solid, comfortable option to sleep is such a big factor of your trip. You're spending a lot of time in there, and if you're not getting a good sleep, then you're probably not gonna have a good time. So that's why we have, you know, on Elsie, uh, Camp King Industries rooftop tent. It's gonna go on this for a little bit as well. Um, you know, just for comfort and peace of mind, you know, in bad weather, you can't beat that tent. Um, again, you know, it's a, it's not a cheap option, but it's just getting, spending your money where it counts. And I think the same goes for seats. You're spending a lot of time driving. When you're touring around Australia, probably the most hours you're spending besides sleeping is sitting in the seats of the car you're driving in. So again, spending your money where it counts, uh, you know, in those areas which you use the most, I think goes a long way. So having comfortable seats to try tour in just make a hell of a difference. And I don't think we would have been able to do the trips in Elsie that we did um, without the seats. And that's not an exaggeration. Um, the seats I had in there before were horrible. So uh, yeah, really happy we've got them in this car and um, I think they look fantastic. I love them. So we'll crack on to the next thing. I think we're going to put tyres and rims on now. Tires and rims are on, the car is looking absolutely huge. <laughs> um, looks awesome, no, I'm really happy with the way they're sitting. So that's a zero offset, uh, the track, track, um, black track from ROH. Zero offset, I think, is the way to go. We actually had the Neg 22s before, um, and the poke was just too much with the track correction and the, and the uh, 315, 75, 16s. 
but um, yeah, they look awesome. The three one fives just I reckon they just look right on a seventy series. Um, there's probably more convenient sizes for a seventy series, but they just look so good. The three one fives, so gonna whack these on. These are just our temporary plates. Uh, we had to get these. We've actually got a custom set back home, um, which I'll throw on at some stage. They're pretty cool, but we'll throw these on for now just so we can get moving. All right, another thing we're gonna throw on here is just the Oricom tire pressure monitoring system. Um, look, when you're on really rough roads uh, and your tire's going down, sometimes you don't know until the tire is destroyed. That happened to me uh, in LC when we just bought it. Um, it was obviously super loud inside and the tire uh, was going flat and then eventually just shredded completely up. Um, so it was sort of an expensive thing. One tire costs more than one of these, so these are a good little bit of insurance. Um, this is actually the new unit from Oricom. We used to have the unit which was a valve replacement. Now, they're really good, but the issue with the valve replacement is when you want to go get the tires rotated and balanced, you either have to take all the tires off, strip and fit, to put them on the right corner, or reset the module, um, which just costs a bit extra, or it's just a bit extra time. Whereas this new unit from Oricom is just the valve end, so you just unscrew the cap, screw these caps on, and then it'll just link up to the little system, which is just um, charged by solar, so you can just put it on your dash. Uh, you can have up to 10 tires on it on the same system, which is really good if you've got your camper trailer or your caravan. Um, yeah, so a really simple little bit of insurance to have. Um, and even on the River Road, uh, just recently we knew one of our tyres was going flat because of this system. Uh, so, yeah, a good little bit of insurance to have, I think. So we've got the Cam King tent on now. This is just the one we had on Elsie. It's a obviously a fantastic tent, extremely comfortable. So we're really happy we've just got it on uh, until we get the rooftop conversion on. Um, you know, we're gonna be able to use it over summer. We're gonna be able to have some fun with it. We're gonna be able to tour in it and just sort of test the car out. Um, we've got the front runner rack on as well, the three quarter rack. So it's just good that all these products come together because it's the same sort of setup we had in Elsie and it worked fantastically. So uh, yeah, it's just a it's just a bit taller than, than LC. <laughs> Man, this car's huge. Like, yeah, this is a big car. I'm gonna need the step to do the awning up. Anyway. <laughs> You're not yeah. a short person. No, I'm not, I'm not, yeah, I'm like 6'2", probably 6'3", with my boots on, my high heels. So, yeah, it's a big car, it's huge. All right, as you can see, just behind me, Steve has convinced me to do a night mission and <laughs> put the rear bar on the car. So we've taken off, I'm just starting to take off the old, oh, the, the stock bumper here. Um, it's pretty straightforward, but we're just having a look here and Steve is persevering and putting this together. He's a good bloke. But uh, should everyone expect this service from you, mate? Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> Whatever it takes. Whatever, Whatever it, it takes. takes. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, yeah, look, it was his idea. <laughs> um, so we've got the Cruiser Company rear bar here. Um, so yeah, we'll put it together, throw her on, and just like that, it'll be done. What yeah, do you reckon? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, it's, it's going to take us... It's falling together. About half an hour, I reckon. <laughs> Okay. 
you have the mud flaps now, got the rear bumper off, it's just three little pieces, not much to it, so yes, the can of worms is intensifying. <laughs> One of those things you're like, hmm, should, should we have started doing this? But anyway, it'll be worth it once it's done, isn't that right Steve? Yeah, it's worth it for me anyway. For you, Austin. Alright, we've got the Cruiser Company bar on. Steve has been working all morning on uh, cutting the flares because we had to cut the flares and then uh, modify the mud flaps again. Uh, sort of to make it all fit, which is just a lot of work. Doesn't sound like much, but this is one of those things that takes a long time. Then I've of course been flailing and battling along, slowly getting the arm on, but it's on. And yeah, I'm pretty happy. It's looking really good. Um, Steve had a good idea. Got a little bit of edge tape here, just sort of like grippy edge tape. Just gone over the lip a little bit, just to stop scuffs, but also just a bit of grip to climb in and out of the car. So that was a really good idea, and it looks nice. This is all good ideas, this fella. <laughs> anyway, we're a little bit delirious. We've been putting accessories on for days now. Yeah. We're nearly there. Thanks for watching. You can't miss the next few episodes where we head to South Australia and do some serious engine upgrades to the Troopy at Performance Diesel Tuning. And do a shakedown trip to the Bendelby Ranges where we test the Troop and all the mods so far and give our thoughts on the gear. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one. Cheers.